Shalom dearest brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this week's episode of Midweek with the Saints. Today we are going to take a look at the life of Saint Teresa of Avila. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Saint Teresa of Avila is known as a patron saint of all contemplatives. She is a doctor of the church. She has done many writings during her lifetime and one of the most famous ones include the interior castle. But interestingly as well and lesser known is the fact that St. Teresa of Avila is also known as the patron saint of headache sufferers. Yes, headache sufferers. This is because in many of her writings, she's not saying the fact that she has a headache, that she's suffering with a headache at this certain point of time. And for that reason, she is known as the patron saint of those with headache problems. So brothers and sisters in Christ, if you have a headache, this is the saint for you to look up to to pray for her intercession, for you to be relieved of this headache or for you to pull through with this headache and to still do what God is calling you to do. Because that is what St. Teresa of Avila did. Even though she was having a headache, she still decided to sit and to write whatever the Holy Spirit wanted to write in and through her, through the wonderful books that she wrote. Brothers and guys, I wish I could build on the fact that she's patron saint of headache sufferers. But today I would like to zero in on the fact that she's patron saint of contemplatives and for all those who want to grow in the prayer life. As I said earlier, she wrote one of the best books on prayer life ever, The Interior Castle. But before we do that, let's take a look at her background story. How did she become a nun? How did she discover a vocation? Was she born a nun? Was she born holy? Far from it. <laughs> Far from it indeed. So accounts tell us that she comes from a family, a Catholic family, and her father was quite rigid and pious. So the fact that it was rigid meant that he was strict to certain extremes at times. And this rigidity and uh, strictness really caused a lot of chaos at home. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, contrary to last week's saint who had a great father figure to look up to, this week's saint does not have quite a great father figure to look up to. Although he was pious in the sense, he was too strict and too rigid. And Teresa of Avila felt that um, the marriage which her mother partook in with her father ultimately destroyed her (laughs) because he controlled her too much. To make a long story short, Brothers and Christ, many people have this impression that all those who are canonized as saints in the Catholic Church are basically born saints. But that's not the case, friends. Teresa of Avila is a doctor of the Church and one of the best saints ever. But she was not always a saint. In fact, she, as a teenager, she cared only about a number of things, namely boys, flirting, clothes and rebelling towards her parents. Uh, So much so that when she reached a certain age, 16 or 17 if I'm not mistaken, her father who was very strict decided that she was already out of control and he had to do something about it. Therefore, he decided to send her to a convent. At first, she hated it. But guess what, friends? She eventually started to enjoy life in the convent for two reasons. Of course, she started to develop this love for God, this love for God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit in her life. And also because the nuns were far less stricter than her father at home. To make a long story short once again, because we only have so much time in this podcast, St. Teresa of Avila ultimately joined the convent. And when she joined the convent, she had to practice mental prayer. And it is through this practice, through this desire and hunger for God to grow in intimacy with God, that she wrote tons of books, including The Interior Castle. Now, we don't have enough time to dive into the interior castle today, but what I would like to dive into is the fact that this saint who knew so much about prayerfulness, about contemplative life, about coming to the heart of Jesus, about being intimate with Jesus, she directed all of us and pointed us to Saint Joseph, whom Pope Francis has dedicated this year to. And I quote, Saint Teresa of Avila said this, Those who give themselves to prayer, should in a special manner have always a devotion to St. Joseph. For I know not how any man can think of the Queen of Angels during the time that she suffered so much with the infant Jesus without giving thanks to St. Joseph. So if we have a devotion and a sense of gratitude towards Mother Mary, we should have a devotion and sense of gratitude towards St. Joseph as well for all the services that he rendered them then. He who cannot find anyone to teach him how to pray. So for all of you and including me, if we cannot find people to teach us how to pray, if we want new ways to learn how to pray, 
Let him take, and St. Teresa of Avila says, let him take this glorious saint, St. Joseph, for his master, and he will not wander out of the way. St. Teresa of Avila had much depth in understanding, depth in understanding of the prayer life of the interior castles, of how we proceed from the outer courts to the inner courts, to the Holy of Holies. She had such a good grip on all of this. She knew all of this well. She knew the fundamentals well. And she said that having a devotion to St. Joseph is not only helpful, but it's also essential. And my friends out there, those of you who don't have many people to look up to spiritually, St. Joseph is the man according to St. Teresa of Avila. And allow me to just share with all of you a few other quotes and that point us towards the relationship that St. Teresa of Avila had with her spiritual father, St. Joseph. Now, the interesting thing is this. St. Teresa of Avila did not have the best father figure biologically when she was growing up because he was far too strict. But she managed to develop this relationship with a spiritual father who walked with her throughout her life as a nun. So some of her other quotes include, To other saints, our Lord seems to have given grace to succor men in some special necessity. So different saints have different specialties, so to speak, or different areas in which you can invoke their intercessions. For example, St. Anthony for lost items, or St. Jude for hopeless cases. But to this glorious saint, St. Joseph, I know by experience, St. Teresa of Avila says, to help us in all, in all, the other saints help us in different areas and aspects, but St. Joseph helps us in all, in all matters. And our Lord would have us understand that he was himself subject to him upon earth. For St. Joseph, having the title of father and being his guardian could command him. So now in heaven, he performs all his petitions. Now friends, I would like to share with you this quote by an author of the book called uh, The Life and Glories of St. Joseph and how and why St. Teresa, the patron saint of contemplatives, of prayerfulness, of prayer life, is ultimately pointing us to St. Joseph because St. Joseph is the patron of all patrons of contemplative life and I quote from The Life and Glories of St. Joseph St. John the Evangelist enjoyed for a brief hour a blissful ecstasy while reclining on the bosom of the Saviour. You know, at the Last Supper, we all have seen this imagery, this illustration of St. John the Evangelist resting his head on the chest of Jesus. But this author says, But how many times did not the Saviour himself take his repose on that of St. Joseph and sleep sweetly in his arms? Every kind of divine and human light enclosed in the heart of the Saviour must in a sense have been infused into the soul of Joseph when he thus lovingly reposed in his embrace. We must place the incomparable Joseph at the head of all the greatest contemplatives since he lived in a continual state of contemplation in the most exalted form. And I agree with this author and I think St. Teresa of Avila would definitely agree with this author. We must place St. Joseph at the head of all the greatest contemplatives. So he is up there above St. Teresa of Avila, above St. John of the Cross. And that is why St. Teresa of Avila points us to St. Joseph. And let me bring you all back to another quote on St. Teresa of Avila to, about St. Joseph as well. You know, she says this, But I ask for the love of God that he who does not believe me in terms of dedicating to St. Joseph will make the trial for himself when he will see by experience the great good that results from commending oneself to this glorious patriarch, St. Joseph, and being devout to him. Brothers and sisters in Christ, St. Teresa of Avila says, even if you don't believe her, even if you don't believe me, even if you don't believe Pope Francis, just try it yourself. Dedicate yourself to St. Joseph. Have a form of devotion towards him. Consecrate yourself to him. And you will see the fruits and the effects of being close to St. Joseph who is the head of all contemplatives because Jesus rested on his chest when Jesus was an infant. There is so much of truth and depth to unpack in the life of St. Joseph. And St. Teresa of Avila has done a great deal today. Now we are in the season of Lent and the three pillars of Lent are prayer, fasting and almsgiving. Today we took a look at how St. Teresa of Avila shows us the manner in which we can grow in prayer. It is by having a devotion to St. Joseph. So this season of Lent, we are just in the starting phase of the season of Lent. Let us turn to St. Joseph. 
Let us turn to him. Let us run to him. Because St. Teresa of Avila is asking us to do this. And let us also seek her intercessions that we may turn to St. Joseph as a spiritual father. Let us pray. Remember, O most pure spouse of Mary and my dearly beloved guardian, St. Joseph, that never was it known that anyone who invoked your care and requested your help was left without consolation. Inspired with this confidence, I come to you and with all the ardor of my spirit, I commend myself to you. Do not reject my prayer of foster father of the Savior, but graciously grant it and answer it. Amen. Yes, Saint Joseph, foster father, patriarch, patron saint of all contemplatives, you will not despise our petitions, but in the mercy here and answer us, Saint Joseph. We ask right now for the grace to grow in the contemplative life, to grow in the prayerful life, to grow in the life of grace, to grow in life in the spirit, that we may be more and more on fire for the gospel of your son, Jesus Christ, Saint Joseph. St. Teresa of Avila, you have shown us through your life that it's not our past that matters, but what we, are, what we want to do from today onwards. What we want to do from today onwards is to respond to the love of God. St. Teresa of Avila, pray and intercede for us to walk in holiness consistently in every day of our lives, in every area of our lives. Any area of our lives that are in darkness, St. Teresa of Avila, help us to commit it to Jesus. Help us to run to the Father. Help us to run to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Help us, St. Teresa of Avila, to run to St. Joseph, to have a special devotion to him, to consecrate ourselves to him, just as you encouraged us to in your writings time and again. And St. Teresa of Avila, in all seriousness, I ask right now that you seek, through your intercessions, the healing for all our viewers who have headaches right now, who struggle with migraine, St. Teresa of Avila, through your intercessions, may they be freed from migraine once and for all. May they be freed from this headache that is disturbing them. And if there are roots, different roots to this headache that they should know about St. Teresa of Avila, through your intercessions, I pray that these roots of these headaches will be made known. Whether these roots in themselves are physical, emotional or spiritual, reveal them to your dear friends who are walking on the face of this earth right now on our earthly pilgrimage. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you all for tuning in to this podcast. There is so much of truth and depth in the life of St. Teresa of Avila, one of which we only unpack today, her devotion to St. Joseph, since it is the year dedicated to St. Joseph. I encourage all of you to read the interior castle, and of course, in sometime this year, read the interior castle, but for the season of Lent, let us grow in prayerfulness, and let us have this devotion to St. Joseph. Now, friends, before I end this podcast, I would like to ask all of you to visit this website, City on the Hill Co., because City on the Hill Co. is giving all of us, the viewers on Midweek with the Saints, our community here, Midweek with the Saints, a 5% discount on all her items on her online shop. So you can just click on the dis- uh, this description box in YouTube or you can click in my bio and you will come to this link over here. Let me just share this with you all right now. Yep. If you click on the bio, the link tree website, you will see this and you see at the top over there into the word, the second one, 5% off on City on the Hill Designs. So click on that, simply click on that. And once you click on City on the Hill, you will reach this website. And I'd like to share with you all, there's a ton of wonderful Catholic merchandise here. Uh, some newly added t-shirts. Yeah, we have a Art Majorum De Glorium t-shirt. For only 40 ringgit, we have a lot of stickers, we have prints, we have cards, and wow, amazing friends, we have the Immaculate Heart of Mary print, the Most Chaste Heart of St. Joseph print, and the Sacred Heart of Jesus print. We have Max even, You Are Loved, and a ton of other Catholic merchandise here. St. John Paul, the boss, yeah, doesn't he look so cool over here? St. Teresa, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, Padre Pio, and so forth. St. Catherine of Siena, my patron saint. Friends, there's a lot of stickers, a lot of prints, a lot of cups and t-shirts that you can purchase from this. And, and oh yeah, and there's this beautiful one here, Hearts of the Holy Family print. All the three hearts, the Chaste Heart of St. Joseph, Immaculate Heart of Mary, and the Sacred Heart of Jesus. I encourage all of you to choose whichever merchandise you would like to get, be it the sticker or the print. 
and purchase it from her website. And when you are at the checkout point of buying these materials, I ask that you insert the coupon code MWTS5. MWTS5 so that you can redeem the 5% discount upon your checkout. So friends, use this wonderful material as tools of evangelization. I've said this, but I'm going to say this again. When people see us using Catholic merchandise, your friends, your family be moved to ask you, who is this or what does this mean? And that, my dear friends, is a door wide open for you to evangelize the good news of Jesus Christ to them. Blessings, guys. Until next week, take care and God bless. Have a blessed season of Lent. <laughs>